Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the uh, Wake Dot Show. I am uh, Fisher the Man. I hope everybody is uh, doing well. Ooh, we got, I got something special for you right off the bat here. Look at that. Look at that. That is, uh, let's see, what are they calling him? Starman. That's right. They're calling him Starman. Floating around in space. While you're driving around your beater, Starman's driving around a $100,000 Tesla. Driving it around the planet. All right, let's make sure everybody is on board this morning. All right, our uh, guest today, Eric Stratman from TNL Coaching, uh, TNL Nutrition Coaching, also uh, on the show today. Columnist Tim Bryce, and uh, Tim Bryce uh, is uh, is a conservative columnist. And I used to have him on the show, um, or used to work with us at uh, AM820 when I was doing uh, mornings over there. So we're going to talk to him, uh, you know, about uh, about things that are on Tim Bryce's mind. I, and, the, and here's the thing: for the last like 18 months, or I, I don't know, we'll, we'll 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 get the details. But he was writing also for the Washington, I'm sorry, the Huffington Post, which is not a uh, you know conservative uh, uh, website. And uh, I always thought that was a very interesting dynamic, and I thought it was really cool that they, uh, you know, had, you know, had him on, you know, uh, writing columns for him. But uh, they have severed ties, so we'll talk to him about uh, about how that went down and whether or not, um, you know, there was any politics. Or I just, I'm just very curious to know what happened there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about stuff you should know today, and. Um, uh, well, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, government shutdown with uh, Tim Bryce as well. We'll have him on. Actually, I'm going to pull him up here in just a couple minutes. Uh, Steve Wynn is out. If you don't know the name Steve Wynn, Steve Wynn is the, um, uh, you know, a very powerful name in Las Vegas, the Wynn Hotel. So he also was the one who built the Bellagio, if I remember correctly. I don't think he owns it anymore. But anyway, uh, sexual misconduct has caught up with him so we'll talk a little bit about that today uh gronk was robbed while he was up playing at the super bowl black panther review um crypt cryptocurrencies some of not all of them but uh to hit zero we'll uh, talk a little bit about that and still trying to figure out what the hell all that means uh jeff says Ses- uh our ag jeff sessions here in uh, tampa and the uh, first brits were black uh very interesting uh, story today that we'll get to uh, coming out of England, some archaeologists on uh, covering some bones. And because we're still trying to put together that, uh, you know, when, h- how we've evolved over the past, you know, 200,000 years. And um, it looks like maybe the first Brits were actually still very dark skinned and blue eyed. Mm, very interesting. Uh, so we'll go back to uh, that here in just a little bit. But let's uh, check back in with Starman. How you doing, Starman? I'm doing fine. It's a little cold up here. Well, that is a beautiful view you have behind you there, Starman. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Now I have to uh, come back to... Hi. And let's uh, go ahead and pull up uh, Mr. Bryce. So how is everybody doing this morning? Ellie, let's uh, check in to see who's already logged on. Oh, Johnny Torres, my uh, wife, uh, have logged on uh, this morning so far. And uh, that's it. That's it. My former uh, show partner and my wife are uh, supporting the show today. I did. I did hit. Uh, I hit share before we went on. I'm trying to uh, do a better job of sharing because that's a, obviously a very important part of this uh, whole thing is uh, getting people to watch. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, my buddy Tim here. I'm, over, I'm already one minute late. He's a prompt guy too. Whoops! No! 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 Let's do this. Oh, it seems to be working. Seems to be working. All right, let me. All right. Oh, there he is. There's my dear friend. Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing today? Good, having a good day. All right, good. Well, let's. I've got some decent weather. Well, it's uh, it's good to have you back on the show. I want to get uh, caught up with you. Um, you uh, let, let's talk. Let's just start. What's what's going down with the or what happened with the uh, wash or the uh, Huffington Post? Well, um, they they basically uh, shut down, you know, the contributors platform. If you were, recall, you know, I was working for News Talk Florida there for quite a while, and you know, writing stories for. Uh, uh, the radio stations, as you'll recall, and I, I wrote on things like business management, all kinds of stuff, technology, and oh yeah, politics. Now you got to remember, I got involved with Huffington Post just two months before the 2016 election. Jim Williams set that up for me, 
And Jim said, hey, listen, this will give you better exposure than just Florida. I mean, you know, international. And uh, initially he was right. I went out there and I had uh, lots of hits on my columns. I was going wild with it. But then uh, uh, I wrote right afterwards, right after the election, a thing on the Electoral College because there was a lot of people complaining, you know, uh, uh, we, we should have a popular vote or whatever. So I wrote this piece, you know, what does the Electoral College mean? Which, by the way, is a beautiful concept and has pushed forward by uh, Jefferson. What, you and I have to talked about that in the past Yeah, and, well. I, and, and I noticed that you, uh, I didn't know that that was a left-wing, right-wing thing because, uh, you know, you had written that the liberals hate the Electoral College. I, th I just thought there was a lot of Americans that are confused about ele the Electoral College. Yes, uh, that's basically the thing. It's, it's education. They just don't know. They don't even teach that in school anymore. You know, they have no idea what it's all about. And it's a very, it's a brilliant way uh, by which you make sure that everybody uh, has parity out there. The idea was originally set up to uh, so that the rural states uh, would not be domineered by those with a huge metropolitan uh, populace. Back then was New York, Philadelphia, Boston, things like that. So that's all you would have to do. And the same is true today. You know, I mean, uh, if you did it simply by a, a popular vote, all the guys would have to do is just appeal to the big metropolitan cities and right. so on. Uh, but, but nonetheless, I write this column, and next thing I know, I've got a, uh, my 26-year-old snowflake editor from the Huffington Post calls up, well, I don't know about this. You know, somebody complained about this and that. You know, and I go, hey, look, this is a factual type of thing. It's written up in the Constitution. This is what it's about. I'm going to stand my ground on it, you know. So I got a lot of hits on that. But I said notice shortly after that that my hits were going way down and uh, and I discovered that you know they weren't promoting my pieces anymore and uh, that's why you know you would see me write out stuff uh, through email or in the various uh, internet chat groups you know I said hey my post is out here that's the only way I would get the stuff on it so finally uh, January they decided to clean house and shut down the contributors platform and you know, they do still have contributors going on there, which are paying on a cash basis. But, you know, I, I wasn't asked to participate in that. It was made very clear to me. And, oh, yeah, it came down real fast. Like one day, uh, uh, just out of the blue, they said, okay, you're out of here. Goodbye. Bang. And, you know, okay. It was kind of funny, Chris, as you probably know, that uh, people said to me, how in the world, Tim, did you ever get your stuff in the Huffington Post? I mean, you're a conservative. Right, right. And, you know, you what, what in the world is going on? Or they would say, no, I'm not going to read uh, the Huffington Post, that liberal trash, you know, like that. And I said, please, please just read this column, you know, and you'll see it. And, they, you know, they were amazed. So I, I had a lot of success with that, and I turned a lot of people on uh, to the Huffington Post on that. But I think I was the last conservative voice over there. Uh, everything else, there, these are all kids and they're millennials, uh, uh, writing about bashing Trump and, and so on. So, uh, you know, I'm not surprised with what happened at all. You know, I thanked so, them. So, you know, I, it was a great opportunity for me, but, you know, hey, time to move on. So, was which, this, is which this, by the way, if there is anybody out there looking for uh, some new publisher, I, I, I'm available. So was this uh, uh, Huffington Post was trying something a couple years ago when they brought on you and people like you to like, all right, let's 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 have a more well-rounded uh, Huffington Post. And then it just didn't work. They didn't work. It didn't work out the way they wanted to. Or, you know, what what was, you know, because they liked you there for a while. Then all of a sudden it was just one piece and they said, I get rid of them. No, it wasn't just one piece. What they what they do when they want to turn you off is they just don't promote you. Okay. So in other words, if you go to their place, you know, you have a hard time finding Tim Bryce after, you know, that one piece came on out. Okay. I mean, it, it's very difficult to do this. So they're trying to be very, you know, slick out there. Well, you know me, I, I hang around there to the bitter end and kept it out there. Now, understand this about the contributor platforms. There's a lot of people out there with contributor platforms. I'm hoping the post is not unique in that regards. And it was a great opportunity. They're, they're trying to cultivate, find some good writers out there. Uh, in the process, but something along the line of their ideological way of thinking. All right. Well, listen, I've got you on my show. Let's talk about some of the news of the day, then we can get some stuff off your chest. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with the, um, um, well, I, the stock market. Do we make much of the stock, mar stock market over the past couple of, uh, you know, the last week? Uh, everything that I'm reading, it says, basically no things are still way up from a year ago uh things are very good this is just kind of one of those things well bottom line are you happy happy with uh, you know what what your portfolio is and uh, i'm going to say yes 
Um, I think it was a correction like everybody's been saying all along here. Yeah. Uh, I haven't checked it this morning. I don't know what it's at right now, but uh, uh, I was, it was kind of wild watching it yesterday going up, down, up, down, and then finally came way back on up, and uh, I was surprised with that, pleasantly surprised with that. Well, let's, you know, I think it was natural that it was supposed to happen. Yeah, it seems like that. I know as it's happening, it's, it's very scary, uh, but I saw somebody describe it. Oh, it was my buddy yesterday. I uh, had a, a guy, a buddy of mine that's uh, uh, very well-rounded, and he was in the financial district or industry for a very long time, and he said the best way to describe this thing is like when you're uh, riding in, on a plane. You know, you're, 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 you're cruising right along. There's a couple of bumps here and there. He goes, but one time I was on a plane, and all of a sudden it dropped 120 feet. Boom. Everybody freaks out, and then the captain comes and goes, it's okay, it's okay, we're all okay. He goes, that's what you've seen the last few days. It was just one of those things where the plane drops 120 feet, but everything Everything's going to be fine. Yeah, that's true. And uh, it, it's funny. If you look at the stockbroker's fingernails, though, they're, they're really chewed up. My guy, uh, <laughs> and I, I'm not kidding on it. These guys literally, you know, chew the heck out of their nails and so on. That's how you know whether the stock market's good or bad. You know, if they got clean nails and everything, hey, that's, that's a good sign. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, some of the other things that I have in the news today. Um, and that is a possible government shutdown. And uh, in Donald Trump, one of the quotes that are being pulled out today is uh, he'd love to see a shutdown. It'll be the Democrats fault. If it happens, let's do it. Um, how do you see the next few days playing out? Uh, they will settle it somehow. I'm pretty uh, convinced on that. However, the immigration is not going to happen this year the at all. There's going to the be nothing thing. out there. The Democrats are going to fight them tooth and nail because it is an election year, plain and simple. But but uh, you, you, uh, so you don't see DACA uh, being part of this next spending bill? No, okay. no, I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think it'll come out, and we're just going to keep the government going on because they got to keep the military going. They got to keep everything else running. And they will back off. The Democrats will back off over DACA and so on. The only way the DACA is going to pass again is if they get together with Trump and they go through his four pillars and and uh, get some sort of agreement on that. But I don't see that happening at all. What is going on, Chris, and I wrote about this last week, is you've got a war going on inside the Democratic Party. And it's over the control of the Democratic Party, which, as you know, is controlled by the progressives. And, you know, they took a big blow by uh, losing to Trump you know, in the 2016 election, this year is incredibly important. That's why they're fighting tooth and nail. If they don't win either chamber, they're not going to have uh, somebody to go against Trump in 2020. And if they lose in 2020, the progressive agenda is going to be gone, and the Democrats are going to have to finally break and get some more moderate people running the place. Uh, guys like Tim Ryan of Ohio, who I got a lot of respect for. No, I'm, I'm not a Democrat, but, hey, you know, this is a guy I could work with, you know. All right, well, let's uh, talk about a couple of the other things that we have in the uh, news. Do you know much about cryptocurrencies? Can you speak much on that? No, I, uh, okay. I'm not a good that's guy fine. for that one, not that, yet. That's fine. How about Jeff Sessions in Tampa? I know. I, I didn't even know he was in town, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. yeah let me, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, got my, my, I have my notes in the same screen that you're on, so it will mess me up a little bit there. But... Um, all right, yeah, so Jeff Sessions in town. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the attorney general and where his – got a war on drugs right now. He is talking about the opioid epidemic here in the Bay Area or here in Florida. Um, and I think he's also talking about um, sanctuary cities because I know the state of Florida wants to become a I'm, – or I'm hearing there are those trying to push for us to become a sanctuary state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ridiculous. Um do we believe in the rule of law or not? You know, plain and simple. You know, that's really what this all comes down to. Um, again, we got to let this, the Congress and the president, bang this one on out. It's uh, it's just going to be so difficult. Trump is baiting them by saying, hey, listen, I'm going to give you, uh, allow you like 1.8 million uh, people to come on in, uh, but we need to have the wall. We need to get rid of the... Uh, the family chain and all the other stuff that, that's out there. So it's going to have to be banged out through that. Um, saying, I'm really dead set against the sanctuary city stuff. And I think what is it? Uh, Cor Cor Corcoran is uh, running on a platform uh, against that. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard what Levine has said yet uh, about that. I would assume he's for sanctuary cities, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm against it. All right. Well, uh, Tim Bryce, thank you so much for uh, being on the show with me today. Um, so this 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 thing that happened at the Huffington Post does this affect you in a huge way, or just just annoy you for a couple of weeks and you're on to your next venture? 
Well, hopefully, just for a couple of weeks, I'm on to my next adventure. Yeah, I am available. All right. <laughs> I can I can be bought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but listen, I really appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for having me on, and I uh, wish you the best with the show. I think it's a great format that you've got. It's it's coming along, man. I think we, we are right there. Um, you know, uh, we've spent the this last few, the last state months. of the art. This is state of the art, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. I appreciate it, Tim. I'll have you on soon. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care, guys. All right. Bye bye. All right, that is uh, columnist Tim Bryce, who was uh, one of the contributing columnists for um, uh, the Huffington Post for a little while, and then they've uh, severed ties over the past um, uh, little bit. All right, let's uh, check some comments here. We'll get back to uh, stuff you should know in uh, just one second. <coughs> Chords. How you doing, buddy? That is be the best social media post of all time. The Tesla. <laughs> that was all. Uh, that was Johnny Torres. Uh, even though Johnny. Uh, what's up, Chris? Even though Johnny Torres. Uh, let's come back to that. Well, while we're talking about it here. Let's watch live. Go back to watching live. Yeah. So last night, um, uh, Johnny Torres. There we go. Oh, it's got sound, too. I think it's got some sound that comes along with it as well. So, um, oh yeah, Not yet. Now all of a sudden I just uh, uh, pause on you. So Johnny Torres last night uh, sends me a message. He goes, hey man, you're going to be talking about this tomorrow. And I'd seen some stuff on the uh, Star Man and uh, that he has his own Twitter account. So I was going to bring up that. And then he showed me this. All right, output USB should be coming through just fine. Maybe there's not audio there. All right. So uh, you can follow along at space.com or you can Google it. This uh, He sent me actually the YouTube link when he sent it to me. And uh, this is the uh, rocket ship that they sent up boom, boom, doodle, doodle, uh, yesterday. And uh, this was a part of the payload, right? This is part of the cargo. And that is uh, you get your own shot. You can say, well, let me let me move all this, get all this stuff out of your way. Boom, boom. All right, there you go. There's the view. How cool is that? Can you read what's on the dash there? Don't panic. <laughs> As he heads right into the sun. So uh, I guess I was reading this morning that uh, our star man here was uh, originally going to orbit Mars, right? Right. But then uh, I don't know if I don't know what happened, but I I, heard, I saw that the trajectory now is uh, the Oort Oort cloud or the uh, you know the outer asteroid belt. So we'll uh, see what happens to this Tesla in the end. Man, I hope there's a shot. I hope we get a good shot of it when a, if a if a, a piece of something hits it at twenty thousand miles an hour. That would be uh, that'd be pretty cool. All right. All right, let's get back to, uh, oh, we'll be doing Eric, Eric Strat. Ah, did I not? Son of a gun. Of course I didn't. No, 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 I don't want to stop. Just keep going. I'm such an idiot. Hi, by the way, for those of you listening on uh, Mixler, you are uh, now halfway into the show, and I finally uh, get that up and running. A lot of buttons. To, that's what I, I need a checklist. <laughs> that's what I need to do. I need to put a big checklist in front of me of things that have to get done in the morning before uh, I hit go. And uh, that is one of them there. Um, what am I doing? Sorry about that. I put that back up for a reason. Let's uh, let's get back to uh, Jeff Sessions there because I want to. Uh, he is in uh, Tampa. <clears throat> Deaths up from highly addictive prescription drugs. That is all. Uh, that's our AG right there. The Tampa Bay area is ground zero, zero for the opioid epidemic affecting large portions of the country. Coming from ABCActionNews.com. Deaths from highly addictive prescription drugs are up nearly 6% in Tampa and 16.5% in Pinellas and counties. So the, throughout the entire country or entire state, we're up 6%. Here in the Bay Area is up 16.5%. So it looks like our little uh, slice of heaven here is a contributing factor uh, to uh, a huge contributing factor to the numbers here in Florida. More of the deaths are caused by 
Fentanyl, a synthetic opioid more powerful and deadly than heroin. Quote, I died twice, overdosed. My wife found me in the bathroom blue, says a recovering addict who spoke to ABC Action News in the condition of his name not be used. State lawmakers are currently debating bills how to better regulate um, pain medicines and, or better regulate how pain medicines are prescribed here in Florida. State Bill number 8, State, state Bill 8, would limit most prescriptions to a three-day supply. Uh, we're having this conversation. I love my trivia nights. Last night was uh, trivia night out at uh, uh, Boulevard Burgers. I'll have another trivia night on Thursday. That is a Masteries at uh, Blind Pass. And, um, and then, of course, tonight is karaoke night karaoke night at park and rec and uh, johnny torres came out last week had a really good time so um um i really like doing these gigs uh, especially the trivia ones because they turn into like little mini shows and i need to record them while i'm out because i've gotten to know especially boulevard burgers who i've been doing it for over a year and uh so you get to know the people out there and so you end up uh, going back and forth even over the microphone i'm having a cop you know I'm, ha- I'm doing a show for people who are trying to eat dinner and uh, answer some trivia questions and so um we get on this topic and uh someone was telling me that um i don't remember if it was their son or or who it was yeah i think it was their son um ended up in some situation like around 17 or 18 years old next thing you know being prescribed i think he said 90 xanax a month and i can't remember what he said in the pain so he was taking painkillers and xanax and it wasn't just you know your low your bottom of the which even now even still is a very powerful a powerful enough drug you know those uh painkillers on the uh the lower end of the spectrum i think those are your uh percocets and Vicodin, whatever, the oxycodones, the oxy. And by the way, I, I'm sorry if I'm messing all this stuff up. Uh, but anyway, it was one of the, uh, the Roxycontins that he was being uh, prescribed to 17 years old, 18 years old, and was addicted by the time he was 18 years old. So anyway, Attorney Jeff Sessions is visiting Tampa today to discuss federal efforts to combat, to combat uh, drug trafficking and the opioid crisis. I, um, I hope that Somewhere along the way, he uh, eases up on the, um, you know, on uh, on marijuana, and and starts to see that as possibly part of the remedy, part of the remedy to help people get off opioids. Um, oh, you just want me to go from one drug to another drug? Ah! No, uh, there's a huge difference between uh, the effects of uh, opioids in your brains and THC and CBD on your brain or CDB or whatever that is. Coming up at noon, we'll talk a little uh, nutrition with uh, Eric J. Stratman of TNL Nutrition Coaching. And I got to get a little uh, something off my, uh, I, I, I got to get something, I don't want to say it's off my chest, but just out in the open. And because every week now, I love having him on. Uh, I love that he's on talking nutrition. I feel like uh, at, at one point, at some point in my life, it's going to actually, uh, you know, like click for me. And um, although I'm, I'm, I'm starting, to, I mean, after, I'm 45. I've been going down this path like so many people just over and over and over and over and over again. And I can't get myself out of it uh, or, or can't, I can never get myself on track. Oh, you can. Oh, we're going to talk to him about that too, because uh, I have great anxiety now on Wednesdays. I want to have him on the show, but in the back of my high, it, it head, one of the things that I'm supposed to be doing is, um, you know, like filling out this, uh, this personal fitness app, right. And, you know, loading in all the food and, you know, that I eat every day and scanning it and this and this and this, and this keep a track. And I know it seems easy to most people. Um, to normal people, but th- that kind of thing is, I here here's I'm going to use the f- this term. I can't. Oh yes, you can if you can put food in your mouth and you can type on. Which is I know exactly what Eric's going to say, or do I know that's what Eric's going to say? Am I being a, a a prognosticator? Is my anxiety driving what I think is going to happen? Maybe Eric gets on and is very sympathetic. And says, it's okay, man. I'll try this approach. But at the same time, this isn't all about this isn't about me. I love having him on because, you know, for everybody who's watching as well, uh, so that, uh, you know, if, if I don't get anything out of it or if I don't change my ways, maybe it'll at least inspire you. So I got to talk to him about that because for whatever reason, I just I can't 
and I and I know I hate using that term uh, because I know uh, how that registers to uh, other people. It angers them. Yes, you can. You just don't want to. You're just too lazy. But, and so I do the same thing. I'll get in my own head and go, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm a piece of shit. Um, I can't do life. F it. I, if I can't even figure out how to load, if I can't even do something as simple as send an email, if I can't do something as simple as go to my mailbox, do something as simple as load it, then how, how, why, how, how do you even make it this far? And, uh, and so then I, then that starts to go round and round in my head. And then next thing you know, I'm contemplating why, why bother? So we'll, uh, we'll talk to Eric Stratman coming up here. Hey, what's up, Eric? I didn't know he was watching. <laughs> Guess we'll talk to him in just a couple minutes about that. Um, let me, uh, let me hit a couple more, uh, or let's see what I can uh, get through. Uh, here's one of the coolest things from uh, my prep today, or, you know, s surfing around. And uh, it's this dude right here. Look at that. Look at that. That could be the first Brit right there. The first Brit. According to this uh, coming fr uh, from the Telegraph, well, the Telegraph, looks like the first Britons were black. Natural Museum uh, History Museum DNA study reveals black with blue eyes, possibly, it even says. The earliest Britons were black-skinned with dark, curly hair and possibly blue eyes. New analysis of a 10,000-year-old Somerset skeleton has revealed. Scientists at the Natural History Museum have issued, or I'm sorry, used pioneering genetic sequencing and facial reconstruction techniques to prove that the first hunter-gatherers successfully to inhabit Britain were far darker in complexion than previously thought. The groundbreaking discovery was made in a stroke of luck after archaeologists found scraps of DNA in the ear of the Mesolithic Cheddar Man, so-called Cheddar Man, the oldest complete skeleton ever found in the UK and one of the museum's most treasured specimens. I'm not sure why they call him Cheddar Man, but I have a feeling if you find me 10,000 years after my death, you're going to call me Cheddar Man too, or Pepperoni Man. Or what that, that is, of course, if it's based off of what's uh, coursing through your veins. And there's a lot of cheese and pepperoni coursing through my veins. They then uh, cross reference the genomes of modern inhabitants of Cheddar. Oh, oh, that's why they, that's why they call him Cheddar Man, because I guess they found him in a place called Cheddar. Then I guess they would be calling me Tampa Man. Uh, near Goes Cave in the Cheddar Gorge, where the remains were discovered in 1903, as well as other fossils from across Europe, the results show, contrary to popular belief, that the founding generations of Britons owed more in appearance to the Paleolithic Africans from whom all humans descend. Scientists said they show that commonly understood racial categories are historically only recent constructions. Up to nine previous colonizations of Britain via the new flooded European land bridge known as Doggerland had been wiped out due to harsh temperatures. But the roughly 12,000 humans in Britain at the time of Cheddar Man thrived and their DNA now comprises roughly 10% of the gen genetic makeup of most white people currently living in the UK. They lived mainly in tents made from animal skins and preyed on animals like deer and boar using hunting dogs, bows, and arrows. There he is. There's Cheddar Man. I want to invite Cheddar Man over for, I was going to say football on Sunday, but football's over. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of a cool story. Um, I, uh, I'm fascinated by um, our history. Oh, hello. Hello, is that my, uh, is that my buddy there? We'll get to, um, get to Eric here in just a couple of seconds. Right, what time is it? Eleven fifty-seven. All right, we got a couple of uh, we got a couple of minutes, and then we'll come back to uh, some of the other stories that I have in the news today. Um, and uh, I just thought that one was pretty cool. I, 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 our our history, who we are. I I have a feeling that we don't know who we are yet. I have a feeling that uh, all the great origin myths of our ancestors. All the great stories of who we are, how we got here, and so on and so forth are awesome. But uh, being challenged constantly. All right, you guys ready to talk a little nutrition? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get a hold of Eric. 
So we can uh, call up and yell at us. Yell at us. <laughs> yell at us. Yell at me. Oh, Eric's uh, Eric's a really good guy. I, I build this stuff in my head, and I know I'm making a big deal out of uh, nothing, and, and everything's going to be fine. Or he's getting ready to go screw you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Where'd he go? Hey, where'd he go? Uh-oh, what happened? Call failed. I just saw him. Call back. Where'd you go, buddy? Let's try this again. Nobody had a Mickey Mouse hat today. Yeah, if you guys uh, are looking... <laughs> there we go. Oh, how are you, Mr. Stratman? Very well. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing all right today. I'm doing all right. So uh, are Well, you... after hearing a little chatter, I figured you needed some cheering up. I changed up the the death mask I had for you for a little <laughs> change up of, uh, you know, change of tune because nobody can ever be mad with my man Mickey, right? <laughs> no, nobody ever can. So are you, are you taking the uh, day off? It looks like you're in the comforts of your home today. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, because we get the comforts of this right now. Oh, geez. So my kids are, uh, their school got called off today. So, you know, I'm uh, chilling at the house, you know, for a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, head back to the gym in a couple hours as long as the uh, the weather holds out. So we're going to keep it going. But uh, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. I, I uh, just started my uh, tea therapy. Did I tell you I was going uh, to start that? I saw that you uh, started that. And I wanted to see, you know, how that was going and what uh, – you know what we can do to you know take it, uh, take it to the next know, level keep it keep it going because i've seen with a lot of folks that that have done that therapy that um they uh they actually do well with all of their uh you know mentally physically motivational so uh i'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going because you know all that belly aching you were doing a little while ago is uh you know but it's real it's real you know that's that's the thing is that you know, it's great you put, bring up that point because how many people in your position? I, I probably deal with that about 50% of the people I coach nutrition is that same issue where they're like, well, you know, if I log it and then I don't and, you know, I'm not going to do that well. And, you know, that's where I try to burn that, uh, you know, brand that on them more than even tattoo it is, you know, that consistently average always trumps seldom perfection. So if we get some of the food in, most of it in we start building good consistent habits, then your coach can make sure that you're eating what's right for what your goals are and you just keep eating what it is. So no matter if it's a little hash brown with salt on it, if it's a McGriddle, if it's a few beers or it's, you know, chicken and rice, it doesn't matter. We want to make sure you're on the right track. So the, uh, the tea therapy, I had my second injection uh, yesterday on Tuesday. And so it's every other week for me is what he's starting me out with. And then in 12 weeks, I'll get uh, blood work done on the off week to see okay. where my numbers are there and see whether or not this is something I need to do every single week. So I will. Where were you at? Where were you at before you 200. started? Did they give you your number? 200? Yeah, 200. Wow. That's low. See? Wow. Yeah. You're going to be a tiger. Your, your, your wife better walk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and I'm just going to tell you now, this is, you know, man to man. All right. All right. Make sure you get the calluses off your hands. Do yourself a favor. We don't want any injuries or calling in, you know, you're going on IR because you hurt yourself. So we want to make sure that, uh, that you're there. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's something I noticed. I, I tried a round of it. It was the other one where they inject like the, it's like a piece of rice. Have you seen that? I read about it where it's uh, that's time release or something like that. Yeah, it's time release. So they hit it in your like hip or your glute in a little fatty tissue, and then it uh, time releases over like a six month period or four month period or whatever. And I noticed I gained like fifteen or twenty pounds right away Holy from that. Though that's not the injection, which is different. And uh, I did okay, you know, and it brought my numbers up. I think I was like three or four hundred and it brought me up into the six or eight hundred range because you know they'll tell you that range is 250 to 1200 is where men should be well obviously there's an issue if you know you're 200 and you're you know you see these guys that are like yeah i do hormone therapy i don't do steroids but you know my uh i keep my my testosterone 11.99 well obviously they're 
synthetically making it uh, uh, that, you know, but they feel to themselves, they're like, oh, I'm not cheating because, You're you staying know, within I'm the range. It. Well, the thing that, that so. you know, and uh, when you were doing, I want to talk a little bit more about your experience with it because, um, you know, that's one of the things that we have to keep uh, an eye on. And I'll be getting blood work. I don't know if it's every six months or every 12 months. But once you increase your testosterone like that, then you got to keep an eye on stuff like prostate cancer. Yep. Uh, how long did you do the therapy for? I had one piece of rice. Oh, so that was and then it. I was out. And, and so, I did it. Yeah. And that was it. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. What was it about it? So you didn't like it. Did it make you, did it not make you feel the way you thought or? Uh, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I thought I was going to, you know, feel like Superman, you know, and do it. And it, you know, it was really, you know, again, you get the therapeutic side of it. You know, it was more like a, uh, a test out for clients as well. Cause I didn't want to say, Hey, you know, give me the uh, abundance and triple the, the amount that most people get you know, yeah, that would have been the Superman effect, but I really want to see it's the idea that we are in a position that what is regular therapy going to do? How was it? And it didn't really do as much as I thought. So I never went back to it. And, you know, uh, the, the shrinkage, uh, you know, came back to, to regular, uh, yeah. uh, you know, What's it's funny because you do a synthetic side of, uh, testosterone and your natural testosterone doesn't produce oh. like it should so you'll notice that uh you might go from walnuts to peanuts for a little bit so just you know keep an eye on it but right. they you know typically in an injection if you're going in there every couple of weeks they're going to give you some other countermeasures to make sure that your testosterone still doing what it does so I, you're all right. Yeah, I um. So that my, like I said, every other week, and I notice after the first injection. By the way, most people in the 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 people I've experienced with this that I talked to, they said don't expect something right out of the box. People, well, my brother, my brother said he had felt something like pretty quickly, but it really okay. didn't quick kick in for a few weeks. Other people were telling me it's a couple months. Some other another a buddy of mine said it took him about three weeks. But anyway, uh, I think I did feel the effects of it almost immediately like within 48 hours because 48 hours after I got my first injection I had basically the best way to describe it in a short period of time is like three days you know yeah you have double shifts so I had three days of like triple right. shifts basically I was doing I was doing the morning show I had a class to take during the day and then I had my night gigs um right. and when I would get to like my karaoke get on uh you know midnight I normally am dead, ready to just pass out. And I was, you know, I was ready to, you know, keep that's going. That's awesome. So I feel like can, it got you know, me through those that. three days. Um, but well, I, that's good. That's yeah. a good sign. You know, you, you're, you're, your energy is functioning how it should, and that's uh, exactly what those therapies are intended for. So I'm excited to see that. And, you know, springboard that into the rest of your life, right? So now you can be motivated to do the other things we talked about, whether it's hitting Planet Fitness or going for a walk or uh, – you know, preparing your food or just uh, logging that, you know, let that energy say, okay, well, hey, I'm feeling a little better. I'm in a better mindset. And that could have been a piece or not it could have been, but obviously it was a piece of, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, you're holding back a little bit and saying, okay, well, if you already felt down and dreary and everything, you're not motivated to go the extra mile of what that next piece right. or that next step you need to take in your progress. But now you're already on the uptick. And I'm excited to see each week, you know, how you're feeling, what's going on, and and uh, how it feels. And Maybe I'll have to go to your doc. Yeah, and do you, do you know enough about <laughs> this stuff? Uh, what's like? What's the difference between you know T therapy and somebody that's taking steroids? So T therapy, I mean, testosterone is testosterone, and there's all kinds of different, uh, you know, uh, testosterone therapy, if you will, on the black market because they're basically doing the same thing, but they're not having their blood work done and they're not getting a specific dosage based off of what their needs are for regular activity. What they're doing is they're just pumping themselves full of testosterone and possibly growth hormone and some other uh, concoctions that these guys come up with. It's scary what some people do. Um, and then uh, just to see what happens because, you know, if you increase your testosterone way up, your strength, your endurance, your power goes way up. But that also has issues with other things in your body. So it's not anything you can maintain, but when it's not through a doc like you're doing, you have somebody monitoring all levels of all hormones, not just how much testosterone you're taking, then they're in trouble because they're kind of managing it themselves. Like, Oh, well I want my bench to go up 30 more pounds or I want, you know, another half inch on my bicep. Well, again, that, uh, that kind of thinking is, uh, 
you know, uh, not really healthy, but, you know, the way you're going at it, it really puts you in a position that you can stay successful with it and keep your T levels where they need to be. And it's awesome to have access to that. Um, last week, you and I were talking a little bit about, um, you know, some some eating myths. And we and I so I was asking you about eating in the morning and how important that is, you know. Uh, right. and you were like, no, no, you go, you go, this is how important it is. It shows your big <laughs> bicep because uh, you don't eat in the morning. And it's amazing nope. how many people over the next week I ran into over the past week ran into. He goes, ah, I don't eat in the morning. I don't eat in the morning. I don't eat in the morning. And now I'm, I'm thinking that I'm the odd man out, the guy that's trying to eat in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's well, again, you're, you know, and it looks like you're regulating your schedule a little bit better. But, you know, if you're getting four or five hours of sleep and you need something to get you going and obviously your stomach's going to try to encourage you to give you some fuel and it's getting past that. It's literally trying it for a week straight and saying, okay, I'm not going to eat till 10 a.m. Not go, okay, well, I'm only going to eat from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. and that's it. Like I told you, I'm typically the eight or 10 hour window guy. I'll have my first meal between typically 11 and uh, 11 and 12 and then I'll have my last meal around 8 p.m. And that's it. Uh, and you know, I think about how my schedule, I end up uh, out at least three nights a week out. And I'm wondering, like you said, because I could do, if I get coffee and water in me in the morning or something, something, or just something little, right. uh, say at most a banana or something like that, I'm, yep. I'm usually good till about 11 or 12, but then I am a one starving, angry mf -er. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then, and you know, and, and the funny thing you said there with that, like, say, a coffee or a banana, something that's going to stimulate your craving for more carbohydrates, caffeine does that. That's one of the biggest, you know, uh, uh, hacks that, you know, like an Atkins or keto diet will tell you to do is stay away from caffeine because it makes you crave carbohydrates. If you understand that up front, then you realize, like, hey, if I'm going to drink coffee, don't eat that much. But if you throw a banana in, then your blood sugar is going to go up from that. You're going to feel kind of good, but then it dips much faster. So then you're going to feel very hungry. So if we just skip that banana and stay with the water and coffee, then you're going to be a lot more successful getting to that first meal later in the day than earlier in the day. All right. Well, Eric Stratman, thank you so much for coming on the Wake Dot Show once again. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, man. All right. Uh, stay warm, and we'll talk. Right, to you. We'll talk to you in a week. All right, buddy. You right. guys uh, enjoy your sunshine. <laughs> take it easy, buddy. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Eric Stratman, you can track down uh, the Next Level Nutrition, Next Level Nutrition on uh, Facebook. I'm sorry, TNL. TNL, let's see, please rate the quality of your, it was a nice one, let's submit that. Uh, thank you for your feedback. Well, thank you. Thank you for working. <laughs> uh, TNL Nutrition Coaching on Facebook to track him down. Let's uh, go back to see what our spaceman is doing here now and uh, make sure he's alive and well. All right, good start. Oh, now, wait, how'd they do that? Wait a second. How do they do that? Because, is this even playing? Where's the camera? Because at first, remember, is that a camera right? Oh, you can't see what I'm pointing at, or can you? Yeah, you can. Uh, was that a, is that a camera back there? Is that the angle we were, we were seeing earlier? And then they've got, I guess they got multiple cameras, obviously. Oh, pretty cool. So now we're looking at uh, Starman right in the, uh, the old face there. <clears throat> All right. We talked about uh, Donald Trump. I'd love to see it. Uh, yeah, we, we the, the shutdown is not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Rob Gronkowski got fired. Uh, I'm sorry, not fired. He got robbed. Um, during the Super Bowl, this is effed up. It makes perfect sense, though. You know, you know where somebody's going to be for a certain uh, period of time, and you know that the house is empty. Uh, police are investigating a burglary at Rob Gronkowski's, Gronkowski's, Gronkowski's house in Foxboro. Uh, officers were called to his home about 618 Monday, which is shortly after Gronk. And the New England Patriots returned to Foxborough. Quote, this is Rob Gronkowski calling. And while I was gone, my whole house got robbed. While on the Super Bowl trip, I just got back, he said on the 911 call released. Um, so, yeah, it was a watch. Or on driving in this morning, I was uh, listening to the uh, radio. And uh, I can't remember who. It was Caltus show. And I can't remember who was saying it. Uh, calling in, talking about. Or I, man, 
I think that's who I was listening to. I'm sorry. I I'd flip around, you know, I got like a 40 minute drive in, 30, 40 minute drive in. So I flip around in the morning. But anyway, um, they were uh, talking about uh, kind of making fun of them for saying, hey, this is while I was at the Super Bowl, like on a 911 call going, hey, I'm Rob Gronkowski. I was playing in the Super Bowl. Hurry up. You know, it's kind of what he was doing there. And I'm sure there was a little bit of that. You are you're angry when you come home. You're you can't believe it. You feel violated AF. If you've ever had somebody break into your car, break into your home, it is a you feel disgusting. It is a horrible, horrible feeling inside. And you want that feeling to go away. So when he hops on, if he happens to drop uh, just in case they didn't pick up on who he was, I just got back from the Super Bowl. Man, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, blame the guy on that one. He wants things to be resolved quickly, and his brain is going a million miles an hour trying to figure out how to resolve it. And he's thinking, well, maybe if I, they know who I am, they'll act a little bit quicker. Um, so they're looking into that. I got this Black Panther uh, film review here now on Friday. I think it is. We're in a uh, Roy's going to come in and uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, Black Panther. He's going to go see it, I believe, on tomorrow night. Uh, man, a lot of hype. A lot of hype. We'll see how this thing does. But uh, this particular um, critique here uh, comes from therap.com. It used to be that once characters became established stars, and this is, uh, you know, this isn't a, what I'm getting ready to read with, uh, for you is um, there's not going to be any spoiler situations. I am not going to go very deep into this. I just want to get through these like first, I think it's like paragraph or two paragraphs uh, to just get this person's point out there because it's another angle, another uh, part of this discussion concerning um, the Black Panther. It used to be that once characters became established stars in the world of comics, Publishers would create anthology titles like Superman Family or Archie's Gals and Pals, thus allowing readers to get not only new stories about the title character, but also ancillary tales about, say, Lois Lane or Principal Weatherby. I bring up this because Black Panther does such a great job introducing the fascinating supporting characters in its orbit that it can barely find time to dig into its purported protagonist. Uh, Black Panther... It was introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a fairly brief appearance in Captain America, Captain America Civil War, in which his father, King Chaka, of the African nation of Wakanda, was assassinated. This mostly rousing solo adventure directed by Ryan Coogler, who wrote the Joe Robert Cole American crime story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, surrounds our hero with such a terrific cadre of gals and pals and sidelines him with, for a chunk of the third act that he almost gets shoved to the background. So then he goes in as the film opens, so we won't go into uh, that kind of stuff there. Uh, so supposedly, uh, well, maybe we're going to have a lot to work with, a lot of uh, storylines that will be coming out of this, and uh, we'll see. I still haven't seen Wonder Woman. I still want to go back and uh, watch that thing and uh, so I can figure out why it is that people are saying it's such a, uh, a, 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 it's a woman empowerment film because it's hard for me to believe that. Uh, get ready for most cryptocurrencies to hit zero. And this is one of the things we have on uh, Stuff You Should Know today. Um, and this is obviously a very fascinating story in our times. Uh, new money. Now, according to this coming from uh, Bloomberg, get ready for most cryptocurrencies to hit zero, Goldman says. The tumble in cryptocurrencies that erased nearly $500 billion of market value over the past month could get a lot worse, according to Goldman Sachs Group's Incorporated's Global Head of Investment Research. Most digital currencies are unlikely to survive in their current form, and investors should prepare for coins to lose all their value as they're replaced by a small set of future competitors. Goldman Steve, I don't even get how any of this works, you know? Uh, he said in recent price swings indicated a bubble that the tendency for different tokens to move in lockstep wasn't rational for a few winners take most market. Quote, the high correlation between the different cryptocurrency, uh, cryptocurrencies worries me, he says. Because of the lack of intrinsic value, the currencies that don't survive will most likely trade to zero. So I guess there's going to be those the same thing as anything else will be those uh, winners and losers. And if you're the lucky, if you're the lucky one, I mean, the smart. Right. For those people that end up uh, nailing this and uh, make $500 billion, it's not because they just happen to be the lucky ones. It's because they were the smart ones. Uh, Steve Wynn is out. Steve Wynn, I don't know if you guys know who Steve Wynn is. The only reason I know, I think I know who Steve Wynn is because of my, I love, I, well, I've only been to Las Vegas like twice, twice. Oh, it's not like I'm 
Uh, somebody's going out there all the time, but Steve Wynn, a huge name. Wynn Resorts, um, he's stepping down because of sexual... Whoa, hi, and welcome back. Steve Wynn has resigned as CEO and chairman of Wynn Resorts. The uh, company announced... Do, 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 do. I to make sure I've got my Stuff You Should Know highlighter right. The move comes after a Wall Street Journal report published in January detailed allegations of decades of sexual misconduct by the gambling mogul. This is coming from CNBC. The allegations in the report detailed accounts of dozens from dozens of current and former employees that would amount to a decades long pattern of sexual misconduct, as well as a seven point five million dollar financial settlement paid to a manicurist who alleged she was pressured into having sex with Wynn. Here we go. It is with a collective heavy heart that the board of directors of Wynn Resorts today accepted the resignation of our founder, CEO, and friend Steve Wynn, non-executive director of the board Boone. blah, 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 blah. Steve Wynn was an industry, is an industry giant. He is a philanthropist and a beloved leader and visionary. He played the pivotal role in transforming Las Vegas into the entertainment destination it is today. He also assembled a world-class team of executives that will continue to meet the high standards of excellence that Steve Wynn created and the Wynn Brands has come to represent. Yeah, you know, he's like, uh, like a lot of visionaries, like a lot of moguls. They need to be paid in sex. They need to be paid in young women. And uh, I guess that culture, that climate, that culture is changing. Facebook Sandberg says, hashtag me too. Movement has not gone far enough. The chief operating officer of Facebook, Cheryl Sandberg, says the movement, which has spurred women to share stories of sexual harassment, can spark lasting change in the workplace policies and culture. The question is not if hashtag me too has gone too far, but if it's gone far enough, because it can't just be a moment in time where people raise their voice. These brave, brave women who have raised their voices, they want long-standing change. She has been a long advocate for women in leadership roles, said there needs to be institutional policies that prevent harassment and a system of due process when it does happen. Most of all, she said, we need to end the culture of complicity, people's instinct to look the other way rather than to get involved. We're all responsible for what goes on in the workplace, uh, she said. All right, next up. Got that? Oh, the woman that uh, was found holding her eye. <laughs> Whoa, let's, let's make sure we end on a positive note, everybody. Speaking of eyes, one of the reasons why I'm taking uh, the tea uh, medicine is, well, I, I shouldn't say it's the, one of the reasons I'm taking it. It's supposedly the uh, a positive side effect. I have red eyes all the time, right? All the time. No, this goes long back before I started, uh, you know, partaking. And uh, the same thing with all of my brothers. And we always assumed it was just, uh, well, I don't know, we all had higher blood pressure and it had something to do with the uh, high blood pressure. Um, but then to come to find out, that can be a sign of low T. So I'm hoping that once my T numbers start to come up, my eyes aren't so red. But I will say this. Uh, I think that uh, Zyrtec season has begun for me. And no, this is not a paid commercial. <laughs> I have gone through uh, and had my fair sh- or, or uh, experimented with my clarity or all the stuff that's out there um, over the years because I have had allergy situ- you know issues and this time of year they'll flare up and uh, you know sometime in the fall late summer it'll flare up again it seems like anyway and uh, so somewhere right around February the beginning middle of February every single year I got to start pounding one of you know either the Zyrtec or the Claritin or the- so over the years I I think that I have found that um, Zyrtec works better for me, for me personally, than Claritin. Uh, yes, if things get really, really bad, you take the Claritin D, and that'll uh, that'll get you through a day. Uh, but as far as day in and day out, Zyrtec seems to work better, and I'm sure it's different for different people. But it was yesterday, man, that that, that kicked in. It was yesterday. Um, and... I just started sneezing my head off at about, I don't know, four or five o'clock. And then I'm heading out to a Boulevard Burgers to do my uh, trivia night. 
and it's I'm, I have to stop I'm sitting there. You know, I can't even ask trivia questions because I am sneezing, and this tickle is like somewhere way up in my left nostril, way up, and it will not. I cannot sneeze that thing out. I can't blow it out. I can't do the old, you know, the the one thumb peek in the air. What do they nozzle rock? What do they call it? Uh, whatever snot rocket. I cannot get rid of it, and it was uh, embarrassing. It was not easy to get through trivia night last night. So my uh, so it has begun. Zyrtec season where every day. Now, back in the day, I would take one in the morning uh, when I started my day. But the, it just I, then I have to drink a lot of coffee to counteract the, uh, the some of the drowsiness that comes along with it. So I'm going to try just taking one at night and see if that if that helps and gets me through. Otherwise, uh, if it gets worse, which it we'll see. I'll uh, have to take that crap during the uh, day. All right, the woman found uh, holding her eyeball outside of South Carolina church. Come on. No, I don't have a pi- wait. Let me make sure. No, I don't have a. <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready for this? Uh, I do not have a picture. No, you don't want to see it. Authorities say a woman was found holding her own eyeball outside a South Carolina church. Anderson County Sheriff Chad McBride tells news outlets that it took two or three deputies deputies and two emergency medical workers to subdue the woman to start rendering aid. A retired minister who helped the woman, Reverend Terry Mitchell, says it appeared she had intentionally hurt herself on nearby railroad tracks. He said the woman looked young and struggled against people who were trying to help her. The sheriff's office says deputies responded to assist emergency medical workers and no crime was committed. She was taken to the hospital and there it says the church held a briefing to counsel to see what happened there. Ah, yeah, yeah. When is this? So the message is demons aren't real. They're just made up things, blah, blah, blah. This world is in for some hurt if they continue to disbelieve in the spiritual drugs, witchcraft, occult, pagan practices, etc. We need the church to wake up to its role and begin addressing the situation. We have an enemy to defeat. All right. I should read more of those reactions more often. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for being a part of the uh, wake dot show. What do we got here? <clears throat> Thank you so much for being a part of the uh, Wake Dot Show today. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Fisher. You have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Uh, we'll do karaoke tonight at Park and Rec. And uh, just remember. Wait, oops, my bad. Hold on. Just remember. Don't panic. <laughs> Have a great day.